programming your mind for success using my system of the point of relief. Hi, my name is Slavika Bogdanov. I'm a successful entrepreneur. I'm also a best-selling author with three titles that have gone bestseller so far. 34 books published in the world of self-development, self-help. So what is that of reprogramming your brain using my technique of the point of relief? In order for you to understand uh, where that's coming from and how I got here, I did a lot of research on how the brain functions, what improves uh, the brain capacity in getting new creative solutions, and finding the answers out there when you're looking for, uh, when you're searching for your path or you're searching for a more easier way to get to your goal. In order for you to understand um, my theory and also why it works, we need to go back a few thousand years ago uh, when the caveman was going out to hunt and bring back the food for his family. Cave? was actually where life was, where security was, where safety was, and every time he had to get out of that cave in order to fight a beast and bring back the food, it meant uh, danger, it meant maybe his life being threatened, and maybe not, not ever coming back to the cave. So it, it was really a big effort for the caveman to get out of that cave and then um, fight his way through life and come back to the home, the coziness, the uh, warmth, and um, the comfort. Um, also, as soon as he walked out of the cave, well, his stress level went up, his uh, adrenaline went up, but that also meant that his brain function stopped. As soon as we're stressed, as soon as our adrenaline pumps up, it blocks all our front lobe of our brain, simply because it's not the right moment to start thinking, to start having rational thoughts. For example, thinking about philosophy or thinking about the meaning of life. If you're in a dangerous situation, all you really need is your basic primal instinct of survival, whether you're fighting the beast or you're running away, what we call fight or flee. And that is basically at the back the lower part of the brain, which is more the emotional side, the part where we react only emotionally. Therefore, as soon as the caveman get out, got out of his cave, he would never use the front of his brain, the more rational side, where you have creative solutions. That's where you access all those, um, those solutions, those ideas. That's where you can see new paths. That's where you can have more ideas. All of that got blocked and only the uh, very primal uh, brain worked. I'm explaining all of that to you so that you understand that through the years, maybe we have evolved a lot, but our brain functions have not evolved that much. We have still the same kind of uh, reactions only because that is what helped us to survive. Imagine if caveman got out of his cave and started thinking about the meaning of life just in front of a huge evil animal that's ready to eat him up, he would get eaten up. He wouldn't fight back. So it helps us, it helped us survive through the years. Now we have the same exact uh, reactions with stress today, except that stress today is not necessarily confronting a very uh, mean animal outside. Uh, sometimes that stress comes from confronting our own mean animal inside, in our head, giving us doubts, giving us fears, giving us ideas of what if everything goes wrong. That pumps up the stress in our body. Also, if we're confronted with problems, situations that we're not used to, it'll pump up the stress in our body. That meaning that with that stress being pumped up, the front lobe doesn't work, so we cannot think properly. So the worst possible scenario, if you want to have creative ideas, is to feel stress, because stress goes against having creative ideas, finding solutions, finding a path, way out of a problem. So it's quite contradictory 
that a problem brings us stress, but we actually have to be calm in order for us to find the right solution. That's the first part of my explanation. Second part of my explanation is, nowadays, we don't have a cave anymore. We do have the comfort of our homes, but the system of the cave, the idea of the cave re stayed with us. And basically the system of the cave now became our comfort zone. The comfort zone is what you're used to be living in. Not necessarily just your home, but your lifestyle, the level of income you get, um, the quality of food you have, the number of hours of sleep, the, the type of relationships you, you're used to having in your life, which has been built up throughout the years. And you end up being in this comfort zone. What is your cave? So it might not be the best, but it's yours and it's comfortable. Just as with cavemen, he might have been in a smelly, very dirty, very humid cave, but it was his cave. That's where he, he felt safe. So you might be in a situation that you hate, that's money distress, maybe a family-related distress, maybe a relationship you hate, but you got used to it and it became your comfort zone. If on top of it that comfort zone brings you stress, you will have very little uh, possibility in your mind to come up with a creative solution to get out of that comfort zone. Now, remember the caveman going out of his cave, how much stress that brought him. He probably never wanted to get out of the cave, but he had to in order to get some food. So he had to get out even if he didn't feel like it. Now, the same thing happens with us. Once we find a comfort zone, once we are in our little cave, in our comfort zone, something we're used to, it's very hard to get out of it because genetically, almost historically, coming out of that cave is so dangerous. It means that our life might be threatened, even if it's not the case. But in our neurological pathways, the, the connection that have been made is that it's very scary to go out there and try something new. That's why most of us, once we get something that is not what we're used to, even if it's a lot of success, we might sabotage our success just because it's in, not in our comfort zone. And of course, success is outside of our comfort zone because it's something we are not used to. If not, we would already be successful. So if we want something that we don't have, it means it is outside of our comfort zone. So we have to fight it and get out of that comfort zone. So what I researched is find ways to get a peaceful way out of that cave, out of that comfort zone, so that we get to a new state, a successful state, faster, in a more relaxed way, so that we get creative ideas, creative solutions, and we move forward faster. That was my whole purpose. So I researched, I thought about it, and I found a way that actually relaxes you, which is really important because it's going to make you drop your stress level and also help you move out of your comfort zone faster and more efficiently. So what is that? So let's go back to the caveman just to understand. Imagine caveman now built and had someone tell him that there is another cave not too far away that's super comfortable more and more comfortable than the one he had and told him you know you just have to run you know it's really close you just have to go quick and you'll find a new cave where you can relax and be comfortable so imagine the two scenarios one scenario the caveman has to walk out doesn't know where he's going has to face you know, cre creatures that might devour him. And on the other hand, he has a really beautiful spot that's waiting for him. What do you think is going to happen? He's going to run like hell to that new spot, to that new cave. For us, if we create a new secondary imaginary comfort zone that does not exist yet, our brain is going to do just what the caveman would do. It will find the quickest, fastest road to get to that new comfort zone. 
It's going to change our neurological pathways to create new paths, new ideas, new circuits to find us ideas, methods, anything that will get us to that new comfort zone that is much more comfortable than the one we have and usually much more successful and also much faster. What happens also, what you need to understand, is the way our eyes have been made, created, we only see 10% of reality. So 90% of what's around us is not, we're not capable physically of seeing it. Not because it's invisible, just because our mind can only process so much information. So our eyes are basically not taking all information around us in because it would be too much. We would fry our brains. And on top of it, the brain, once it receives all these images in the back of the head, it's treating it and it's only picking up 10% of those images. So 10% of 10% is not a lot of reality we see out there. By changing your neurological pathways, you send different messages to the brain of what it's supposed to search out there. Because the brain picks up the images based on what we asked it to search for. It's like a radar looking all over and saying, ooh, she thinks money is bad. We're going to prove to her that money is bad. We're going to show all the examples that money is bad. She's sure that relationships are always end up in, break, uh, in heartbreaks. We're going to show her that relationships always end up in a break, heartbreak. Once you change, you cre create a new comfort zone. What happens is immediately the brain sends the message, oh, um, we believe that relationships are super cool. Let's find all the proofs and let's get her to that relationship that's super cool. You see the difference? So you need to change that programming, that neurological links within the brain. How we do that? That's what I call the point of relief. What is the point of relief? Let's say you have created a goal. Let's say my goal is I want to become a um, world famous author. So you create a goal. That goal doesn't usually bring you relief. Usually a goal brings more stress because it's a big goal. You're up here, it's up there. And you're like, how am I going to get there, right? The reason why it brings us stress is two reasons. Why? First, we imagine how we're going to get there. So the how is bringing us stress because we don't know how we're going to get there. And the second reason it brings us stress is because we are not sure 100% that that goal is exactly what we want. Because we think it's associated to some problems or issues we don't want to have with the goal. I'll give you an example. I'm coaching this woman with a little child and she always dreamt of having a home by the sea. So I tell her, let's create the goal of having a home by the sea. To know if, if your goal coincides with your point of relief, you need to check your stress level. So I ask her, how do you feel with that goal? And she says, it's very stressful. So I ask her, why? She says, because I'll never find a house by the sea that I can afford. And that's where you see there is a glitch between your goal and you associate it with something so difficult that it's unachievable in your mind. And because of that, it creates pain, it creates suffering, and it creates stress. If we have a goal that's totally achievable, that we think it's easy, there will be no stress. If we think of a goal and once we think we achieved it, it's super, it feels super good, there is no stress. Therefore, we'll get it really fast. That's why sometimes you have a wish and you see it manifested really fast simply because you have not placed resistance on it. It's just smooth because there's nothing negative attached to that goal. Sometimes you think of meeting someone and you meet them right away because there's no negative, no resistance attached to the goal. So with that woman, I told her, let's create an imaginary world where that house that you want is actually for rent. You don't have to buy it. And it's a renting price that's affordable to you. She says, okay, let's. 
That's how you start your point of relief. You take a goal and then you remove, you imagine a world, a perfect world, where you remove all the resistance from your goal. If I wanted to be a world-renowned author like I used to want to be, what my, my resistance was is I didn't want to go town to town to sign autographs all the time. I thought it would be such a waste uh, to go travel all over, especially if I'm not sure I want to travel all over to sign autographs. I just want to be a world-famous author without it. So everybody was laughing, telling me, Slavika, you can't be a world-famous author without having to go sign autograph every year. And now I became a world-famous author with a three times best-selling author without having to go sign autographs all the time. So it, everything is possible. It's just finding, fine-tuning your goal to remove all the little negative, the resistance that's associated to it. I want this. Mm, but it might cause that. All right, so imagine a world where you would have this without it causing that. And feel it in yourself. Do you feel relieved? Until tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, until it feels relieved. Until you feel no resistance, until you feel really comfortable with it. When you feel comfortable with something, guess what? You have much more chances of creating it into your life. Imagine it sitting in an uncomfortable chair. What's the first thing that you want to do? Is get out of the chair, right? So if you create an uncomfortable goal, you won't want to be sitting in that chair. You'll want to escape it. The more comfortable your goal is, meaning the less resistance it has, the more your neurological pathways are going to be rebuilt to find it. Other reason is, when you feel relief and when you feel happiness, you send, actually your brain produces happy hormones and happy hormones help the brain change his, its neurological pathways. To understand neurological pathways, you can imagine having a big Jeep, big car driving on a muddy road. Every time you drive on the muddy road, you create a path. <clears throat> and that path becomes really, really digged into the mud. Let's say the mud dries out and now you have your Jeep, you're going to drive. No matter where you want to steer your, your steering wheel, chances are you're going to still continue driving in that path. If you want to change the path, you'll have to really use the steering wheel really hard to create a new pathway. So your old mental links, your old ways of thinking are those old tracks. My job, my role, what I'm really good at, it's changing, changing those tracks, creating new pathways, new roads. And one of the ways that I found was the most efficient was doing this uh, path where you imagine your success being comfortable. By bringing in that hormone, that kind of creating that happy hormone in your brain, what it does, it's almost like the, the hard, uh, muddy road is becoming more loose and you can more circulate and create a new pathway. I hope this is visual enough for you. So it's very important to, find, to feel that relief, to feel that comfort, to feel that happiness because it produces in your brain the hormones that will help you create new pathways, new links to two ideas and get new creative ideas and send messages to the eyes saying like a radar, now please search for solutions because this is the way I want to get, I want to get to this new cave. Once you get that point of relief, once you have that goal, where there is no more resistance around it, you smooth all the edges, you're gonna spend 15 minutes every day dwelling in it. Just relax and just imagine you have it now. Don't think of how you're gonna have it, don't think of anything else, just dwell in the fact that you have that goal and it's done. It's almost like you're projecting yourself to that new comfort zone. 
The more you project yourself to that new comfort zone, it's like telling the caveman, there is a new cave now. You can move to that cave easily. We know where it is. You can go there. And zoom, the caveman is going to go there really fast. So I hope this helps you understand uh, the point of relief. Uh, I'm an expert in the law of attraction and the reprogramming of the brain, changing those neurological pathways so people find um, find their way and also get to success much faster, even to outrageous goals, things you were not possible in your mind before, uh, because evidently your limit of imagination goes with your beliefs, goes with those old paths, old roads that you have created. So as soon as we create new ways, new paths, new things are possible. Much bigger things are possible. So I hope this helps. Please share this video to help other people. Also subscribe to my channel on YouTube and come on attractitude.us to find out more about what I do. Um, and thank you. Thank you for sharing and thank you for also leaving a comment. Have a great day.